Good morning and welcome to Hope FM Listen and Live. My name is Grace Mutiso, a brand new day and a brand new sound right here at Hope FM Listen and Live. And we appreciate you, our listener, for keeping it right here as we start today this new journey of fresh voices, fresh things as we celebrate God for helping us be on air for 20 years. And I'm excited that I'm on Leadership Forum. Mm. <laughs> today as we discuss matters leaders and followers and we invite you to be part of our discussion our sms line is 20933 you can also engage with us our whatsapp line is 0717400345 and remember we have the question of the day segment where we give an opportunity to ask any question that is not related to our topic of the day and allow me at this point to invite uh reverend dr david oginde who is gracious to come and join us every alternate monday for the leadership forum and we began an interesting series about servant leadership the last time we were together he, he left me thinking and thinking uh, <laughs> especially on how to build trust and i, I, I hope i've done a good good job <laughs> for yes. the while good morning bishop morning you're doing well very well thank you mm, welcome to the brand new hope well, great. Mm. I'm glad to be here. Asante. Yes. Uh, before we get to the we question. Wait, wait to to hear the difference. <laughs> yes. Yes. I hope you listen to Activate in the Morning. Did you find time to listen to Activate in the Morning Not with yet. our brand new presenters? No. Okay. Not yet. Tomorrow. Yes. I'll I'll wait for feedback. Okay. Yes. Good. T today I don't I don't want us to discuss matters current affairs, but uh, I have a question regarding change. Um, as a family at at Hop Media, there is from today early in the morning, new new voice, new change, new kind of content, and our listeners are great people, and we are having all sorts of feedback. There are those who are happy. And there are those who are like, mm -mm, you shouldn't have moved Bishop from there. You should have <laughs> stayed there. So the question is, how, how should followers embrace change and how should leaders embrace change? An interesting question. Change, by nature, human beings, as human beings, we don't like change. That's by nature. We love to stay in the known. Uh, so people who go out for change are considered adventurous you know they 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 are people who are different from the rest of us uh, it's obvious for example you go to a conference in a new place you're there for five days the first the place you sit on the first day that's where you sit the rest of the conference and nobody ever told you that that's the place you should sit come to think of it <laughs> <laughs> yes mm -hmm. Same with church, same with meetings, in, in whichever place you'll find that people sit at the same place. Board members sit at the same point on the table every time there's a board meeting and they feel lost when they find somebody has sat at their place. So that's just a simple thing, but it shows us how conservative we are as human beings. We love to stay with the known we are afraid of the unknown. It's part of the reason why death is so scary. We know as Christians that we are going to heaven, mansions are there, streets of gold, Jesus is there himself, there will be no dying, there will be no sickness. All those things we sing about, we read about, we know about it. But the moment anybody thinks of ushering you into heaven, you weep, you cry, you kick, you, you know. <laughs> you, <laughs> you oppose it. You oppose it yeah. because you don't want to go. You don't know what this is going to be like. Yeah. I'm better on earth where I know. So that is how, as human beings, we are. We are generally conservative. There are a few people who are adventurous, but even then, in the adventure, there's still that conservative part of us, you know. You, you try it out, uh, whether it may work, but you want to stay with the known. So it, it's, it's not just for leaders, it's not just for members of an organization, it's, it's for all of us, even consumers. You go to your favorite shop, you find the whole place has been rearranged, you don't know where... 
uh, the milk is anymore. In, you get lost yes. <laughs> because you you know normally when I enter, I turn left, the, I pass this, I go there, and my milk is at this space. Yeah. Then you come and you find the supermarket has totally rearranged the place, and you have to ask, so is the milk. Yeah. Who said we should change these things, you know? <laughs> you didn't consult, <laughs> you didn't consult us, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it, change, therefore, is not something that people easily embrace, even if it is good change. People are afraid uh, of the unknown. So uh, it is therefore not unusual that you will find those kinds of feedback. It is only after the change has had effect and a positive one that people then appreciate. You know, not bad, you know, it sounds better, you know, it looks good and that kind of thing. But it is only after experiencing it, yes. not before. So um, as you go through change as a media house, yeah, we will be waiting to hear, mm. to see whether it was worth it. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, mm. and, and part of the change, Major League Bishop, is we, we've been in existence for twenty years, and you yes. are among the first people to, you know, to pioneer this great media house where you're serving. How yes. has the journey been for you from your end? It it's it's a very interesting journey. Now that you remind me, because um, uh, how could I put this? I actually came up with the idea of a radio station. Uh, when I joined uh, the church as administrator, and I remember I was coming from Focus Fellowship of Christian Union, and just before I left Focus, we were in talks with Bible Society to see whether we could start a Christian station. Before, of course, we, we didn't think that we had the capacity to run a Christian station. Just before we, we could do that, then came Family uh, FM yeah. as the first uh, Christian station. And uh, so we kind of settled down. Before that time, you know, it was very difficult to get a license to start a radio station. Uh, there was only VOK, then KBC, and that's it. Yes. <laughs> there was no thought that you could have a, a private radio station. But then the government opened that space, and so licenses were being given. So when I came to church, and uh, the church was already running a program on KBC, which actually where we eventually got our name from, yes. it was called Christ is the Answer, yes. which used to run, I think, on Sunday morning. So um, I thought with the idea that I came with, I thought, why can't we run a, a, a station? So I went to talk to our senior pastor, who would now be called Bishop then, and just sold the idea. Then he said, bring it to the deacon board. So I brought it to the deacon board, and it was thrown out very fast. Oh, my. <laughs> I'm tempted to ask, who are the leaders yeah. then? <laughs> yeah. So there were deacons there and they said, no, no, that is not our calling. We we are into preaching and uh, there are other people who are called into radio and so on. And that idea just died. So they didn't buy into the They vision. didn't buy into that idea. Yeah. Uh, the good thing about our leadership is that our leadership changes. Yes. Uh, every year we get new people coming. So I think it's about two, three years later. Uh, totally new leadership in the board. And somebody brought up the idea, how comes as a, as a church, we are not asking for a license and licenses are being given left, right and center. Well, we, we are in a position to run a station. How comes we have not asked? Mm. And everybody's like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know? It's a different person this, who brought it in. Yes, it was not me. Yeah. It was a, a, a board member, yeah. Deacon, who brought it up. And uh, so everybody bought into it, and I was commissioned as administrator. Please make sure we have a radio, we get a license, yes. and we have a radio by end of this year. Wow. <laughs> wow. Up and running. Yeah. So um, I came back, dusted my previous <laughs> notes, and uh, uh, at that time we had the one who used to do our uh, communication and radio and all that was... Uh, Masibo. Yes. 
So I went to, to, to Masibo and told him this is what is happening. And he was very excited. So together we started working on this costing, budgeting, what kind of equipment we need. And believe it or not, within a year, we hope was up. We, we hope was up. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So it's a, a long journey. And uh, of course, we didn't have too many people doing presentation, pre, uh, presenters and those people. So most of the presenters were volunteers, including myself. <laughs> <laughs> With no pay. <laughs> With no pay. Just passion. Just passion. Yes. Just passion. So we started looking for people. Yeah. Uh, I was doing Spotlight, yes, you know. Yes, I remember listening to it in the village. Yeah, oh, you are. Mm. Yes, so I used to do Spotlight uh, every Friday evening yeah. and, and a few other programs. We started the question and answer uh, at that Life time. Questions. Live questions. Yeah. Yes, I can't even remember who we were doing it with. I remember bringing in Anki Guta, who was a yeah. uh, member of our church in Karen. I yeah. said, you look, you sound like you can be on radio. <laughs> yeah. So I like, can I do it really? And mm -hmm. she came in and uh, she was so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, she was learning on the job. Yeah. So that's how we started. And uh, can we say the rest is history? Because <laughs> <laughs> we have seen hope grow from one uh, degree of glory to another. Yeah. Right after we launched, we were actually, first we were number two most listened to radio station in Nairobi because we're only in Nairobi. Yeah. Uh, of all the radio stations, we were number two. Then uh, I wouldn't say on air the things that happened. <laughs> <laughs> they became number five uh, because there are some people who were not very happy with us and there were games that were being played oh. to just make sure we, we don't break through, you know, and uh, it, it was very interesting. Include people buying out our presenters, oh, yeah. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. It's been a journey. Yeah. We couldn't get any adverts. Nobody wanted to advertise a Christian station. So everything had to be supported by, uh, by the church, yeah. you, really, literally. So to see where hope is now, is an amazing, amazing journey uh, that God has brought us. I don't know how many staff we have now in, in Hope, oh, in Hope it, Media. We're almost hitting 100, Bishop. Imagine. <laughs> From a staff of maybe how many? I'm no, told you are six or the five. Real, the real, the actually employed staff were, were not even five. Uh. They were very few. Others were volunteers. Or others were volunteers from the church. Mm. Yeah, you come, you do a program, somebody comes, does another program. Mm. Uh, so we were just about like, yeah, full time. Eventually we were like about five, yeah. Mm. I remember people like Tina and Zuki and uh, those kinds of people, yeah. One boy Buru. One boy came a little later, mm. yes. Wow. I don't think she was in the original group, mm. yeah. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting. 20 years later, we, we have listeners who've stuck with us for 20 years. Oh, yes. We, we, we have advertisers who've stuck with us for 20 years. Imagine. As the person who God put the vision in, you know, gave you this vision, what would you love to tell them? To tell the, the, our listeners? Yes. And advertisers and friends of hope who keep us up, uh, yes. keep hope on air. Yes, yes. Um. I would say thank you to each one of them. Every one of you who has uh, kept hope alive in one way or another, either by supporting financially or by listening. <clears throat> because you are listening, you, you, you may not be making a direct contribution. But you see, for example, advertisers look at how many people are listening to you. So just by you tuning in, you are making a great contribution to keeping hope on air. Uh, if we were just talking to ourselves, we <laughs> we would be closed by now. <laughs> we wouldn't have anything to yeah. to pay grace to be on air. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to say thank you. And for the advertisers, some of them, yes, we hear them. Uh, they are still on for, for a long, long time who have been with us. Those are adventurous people because they came onto the station that nobody wanted to be part of. Uh, they, they, but they believed in us, stood with us, and have been with us all this time. We want to say, may God bless you. 
uh, in every way. Amen. And friends of hope, amazing people who support this work through giving. And we would want to invite those of you who are listeners to become a friend of hope and uh, join us in supporting this great work for another 20 years. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bishop. I personally celebrate you. If you had, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like the story of Moses. <laughs> You know, you kept the baby there. We hope that one day, you know, <laughs> we'll be, be safe. There. And here we are 20 years later. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. And we also appreciate you, our listener, advertisers. We celebrate you. Let's, let's trust God to go 20 more years. 20 more years. 20 more for years. God's glory. Yeah. Amen. 20 more years. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Let's now switch gears to the Leadership Forum. And we started a series, should be two, three sessions ago, where we're talking about servant leadership. Yes. And we are wrapping it up today. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah. So do you like to pick it up from there? Maybe we do a quick recap. Then we, we, we pick it up from there. Yes. We were talking about the characteristics of a servant leader. And we, uh, it, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, the Diocese of Evansville, Indiana, in the U.S., is a church that uh, came up with uh, 12 characteristics of a servant leader. I just found them so, so useful because they pick out some very pertinent characteristics, virtues, I would call them, of a servant leader. And we have been going through this. We... I think we have done seven of them. Yes. Uh, but you started by talking about trust, mm. uh, and, and trust is one of them, uh, where they, they say that trust is something that helps members to follow a leader. You know, trust is like glue that uh, puts people together. So trust, uh, the act of telling truth, acting honestly, saying what you mean and meaning what you say, uh, it, it really, you become believable, you become credible. Yes. And when you are credible, people will do anything that you tell them as a leader, anything you require of them, because they know they can trust you. Yes. They, you cannot mislead them. You cannot take them to the wrong place. Uh, trust is the is one of the those virtues that a leader can easily abuse. And and unfortunately we have seen situations where leaders have abused trust. Because when I come in uh, as as a member, as a follower of your in your team, and I find that you are trustworthy, you are telling me the right things, you are doing the right things, I see you mean what you say, you say what you mean, just like I've said. Uh, it's like I release myself. Yes. I I, uh, I think I used that example the other day when like when you're throwing a child up. Yes. You I know, remember. you remember mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. They don't care. Mm -mm. You know, they are not thinking that you could leave them to fall. Yeah. So they abandon themselves. And we do that as members of a team. When we find a leader that we trust, we abandon ourselves. Now, imagine if you leave that child to fall you have completely shattered that trust. Yeah. They may never trust anybody again. And uh, leaders sometimes abuse trust in the sense that because you, uh, you have put so much trust in me, then I can now mislead you, misguide you, take you into the wrong places. Uh, we have heard a lot about Shakahola. Maybe you don't need, want to say any more about it. But that, in my view, is an abuse of trust. Yeah. People who have believed in a preacher and believed that you have the word of God, you are hearing from God. And then you use that faith and trust that we have placed in you to mislead us into evil things. I was... I was I was seeing some, some things on YouTube and I just say, Lord, I don't know how you'll deal with us mm. when we get to heaven. <laughs> <laughs> what did you see? <laughs> yeah. You know, this, this, I don't even know whether I should say this on radio, but the kind of things that this preacher pastor requiring or doing in a congregation, absolutely obnoxious. Now, 
And I'm looking at the people who are sitting in this congregation, men and women, look dignified, look reasonable. They are not, I think they are educated and so on. But they are sitting there and seeing all these things happening. Just the other day, I don't know whether you read about it. It was in the newspapers right here in Kenya now. The one I've just talking about was not in Kenya. Mm. But just, is it last week or the other week? It was in the newspaper of this church in Uziru. Did you hear about it? It looks like you did. <laughs> you know, I think somebody tried to start telling me. I just told them, just stop. Just stop. I, I and let it, okay, yeah. I won't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. So I, I just think to myself, you are a leader or you are supposed to be a leader because I don't think that's a, a leader. According to McGregory Burns, who mm. came up with the whole idea of uh, concept of transformational leadership. Yes. He says, people who are, you know, the way we say, um, this is the leader of a gang. Mm. He said, you, gang and leader cannot be in, in the, the same, same sentence. sentence. No, 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 no. Those are two <laughs> different characters. <laughs> yes. yes. So for you to be a leader, you must have values. That's sure. what McGregory Burns says in yeah. transformational leadership. You must have values. So anybody who does not, he says Hitler was not a leader mm -hmm. because a person who can kill people for his own self-interest cannot be called a leader. A leader must be a person who has the interest of the people at heart, yes. the people that he's leading. So uh, people who have put their trust in you and you turn around and now you cannibalize them. You, you mislead them. You take advantage of them. But because of that high trust that they have placed in you, I don't know whether you have been in a place where Somebody is telling you something. Something in you is telling you this thing sounds mm -hmm. like it is not right. Yes. But this person looks so convincing that you begin to think that you must be the one who is issue. in the wrong. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> who has an issue. Yes. That is what trust can do. Mm -hmm. Where you are in a place where you, can, you feel something is just not right. But you trust this person so much that you are pinching yourself and saying, what is wrong with me? How can I even doubt? How can I even think that way? Because you have trusted this person so much. So that's what I mean by the abuse of trust. Yes. Uh, and, and the leaders who are trustworthy need to be ever so careful that we do not mislead people. Mm. Especially for those of us who are preachers. You know, um, we can get into places where we begin to add to the word of God. We begin to uh, interpret the yeah. word of God in ways that are, are not the original ways. If you find the majority of cult leaders yes. were people who started very well. If you read the story of, say, Mar Marion Branham, you read his original books and writings and preachings, powerful, mm. I mean, amazing uh, teachings of the word of God. But then he gets to a point where he begins to take off at a tangent, whether knowingly or unknowingly. But you see, people have already put their trust in him mm. that even when they think that this may not be right, mm. they continue to believe it and they propagate it. And now they think everybody else is the one who is in the wrong. Uh, and, and we are the ones who are right. Yeah. And that can happen in any space, mm. any leadership space, yes. uh, where you, we have seen dictators of nations, you know, uh, as leaders. They can kill people, they can do what, and there are people who believe in them that they are doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, mm. and, and those kinds of people, you find they lead for very long. They stay in leadership for a very long time. Everybody is saying there's something wrong here. Mm. But those who are in the team, they are the things they are the one who is, <laughs> who is, who is on the wrong. And what so, happens, Bishop, for, yes. for a leader to begin so well and change? What is happening in the life of this leader to change and take the negative route and just go south? Right. 
Lord Acton of the UK once said, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Now, when we think about that, we normally think about political power. Yes. But when people trust you so much that everything that you say, they follow. They buy into whatever you say, whatever you do. They get to the place where you, they even almost worship you. You know, you are our leader. You are our what? You are such so wonderful. You are so great. You are no, no, no. It can get your head. It can get your head, and you begin to think or believe that you are the alpha and the omega. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. It it is so so easy, so easy. Uh, I've been into spaces where people have believed in what I'm saying or in what I'm doing. And I can tell you for a fact, it is so easy to get into that place where you think that you are the alpha and, and the, the omega. omega. Mm. You have to be conscious and you have to consciously resist that thought. Otherwise, very easily, you will get into that space. And because people believe in you, so you 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 begin to say things and even things that you doubted yourself. Yes. And you tell the people and they're like, that sounds like a great idea. <laughs> Where did you get that, Bishop? You know? Yeah. And you begin to think, no, I'm not that bad after all, you know? <laughs> I'm, I'm good. I'm great. Yeah. So it is that power that begins to corrupt you. When you see crowds following you, that's why the Bible says Jesus did not submit himself to the crowds. True. Because crowds can mislead you. Yeah. When people begin to worship you um, and, and say how great you are and how wonderful you are, how you are the answer to our organization, you are the answer to our problems, you are the answer to what, you have to be a very, very sober uh, person uh, to remain are true to your original self. Yeah. You can easily find yourself taking the wrong path, leading people into a different direction. We have known organizations now, not just, um, I've, I've talked more like Christian area, yes. but even in business, mm -hmm. where a, a, a CEO, a, ma a manager, a leader, people believe in them so much that whatever they propose, it is taken. And you see an organization that is doing so well, you know? Yes. Doing so well. They are making great profits. They are making uh, great uh, strides in, in, in expansion, uh, opening branches everywhere and doing all kinds of things. And people are worshipping them and saying, you are there. Very soon you find that they may begin to make wrong decisions. And before long, you see the organization beginning to go down under yeah. their leadership. Mm -hmm. Why? Because they became blind to their weaknesses. Mm -hmm. They become blind to dangerous turns. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they, they be, you become deaf to advice. Mm -hmm. You know, you, anybody who thinks otherwise, they are the enemy. You know, get rid of them. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you are leading beginning to destroy the very empire that you had built, built. you know, over yeah. years. Yeah. That's why it is uh, in good leadership, you're, we are advised that it is best for a leader to transition at the peak time. When a very hard one for most of the leaders. Very, because yeah. at that time, they <laughs> want to try, try, and enjoy you, and the enjoy glory. And enjoy the glory, <laughs> yes. You, you, it, it's, it's so important to, to transition. Mm and to manage organized transition at that time when you are when the organization is at its peak allow somebody else to come in and and take it to the next level mm. you know and 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 support them yes. uh, so that it, it moves to the next level it's a great act of leadership otherwise you keep staying on and keep staying on and very soon you start killing your own organization Mm. The very thing that you built, you begin to destroy it with your own hands. Yeah. Sad. I, very I, sad. I pray every every leader listening is able to pick that one up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so we can... So trust. Yes. 
We'll trust. Uh, I would imagine that was a recap. <laughs> 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 we need to move. <laughs> we need to. But need... it seems what I'm picking, Bishop, and observing is trust is the most important component in any leader's leadership season. Ah, well, I would say the. <laughs> I would say one of. One of. Yes. The, it's not like the core. If you have to say top three. You see, trust is born out of credibility. And I would say credibility is one of the most difficult virtues to build as a leader. Yes. So I would say credibility is one of the most important virtues of a leader because it brings in a lot of different components mm. and characteristics of leadership, trust being one of them. Yes. Yes. Because when you become a credible leader, and credibility is not something you put on, mm -mm. It's, it's not something you acquire. Credibility is bestowed, by the way, is bestowed by members, by or external observers. You yes. cannot tell me that you are a credible. <laughs> I cannot no. tell you that I am credible. Yes. It is you who can tell me that I am credible. Mm. And I tell you that you are credible. Mm. Why? Because I have observed your life mm. over a period of time. of time. Credibility is not, I meet you day one and I say this is a credible man. Mm -mm. No. And you can't carry credibility if, if I was in organization A at all. Allow me for purposes of our discussion yes. at all. And and. I've earned credibility as a leader. Yes. I can't carry that to organization B that I'm moving. I have to start afresh. You start afresh. Unless those people knew you from where you are and observed you from where you are, especially if you are in a visible place, in a visible position, where external people can observe you from a distance. Yes. And so they have come to that conclusion that you're a credible person. But even then, when you get to this organization B, they themselves will now start to judge you because now they want to observe you from close quarters. We have had this past. And by the way, your standards, the standards by which you are judged at that new place are higher because they already <laughs> heard your rumors, yes. the rumors about you. So they want to say, let's see how, uh, how this happens, you yes. know. So they will then come to the conclusion themselves that indeed this is a credible person, this yes. a credible leader. But that will be over a period of time. Of time. So credibility is, is, uh, is a great virtue, one of the most difficult virtues to, to, to have as a leader because it, it encompasses so many different facets of leadership. You know, your truthfulness, yes. your honesty, mm -hmm. Your, your, your faithfulness, yes. the way you treat people, the way you handle things, yes. the way you deal with different situations, and so on and so forth. It's, 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 it's a, a conglomeration of so many things put together. Yes. That's why you cannot earn uh, credibility on day one. No. It is five years. It is I 10 think, years. Yes. <laughs> it's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> you have to work at yeah, it. Work at it. Yes. And, and we watch you over time and you are consistent. Mm -hmm. So when we see that consistency, then now we say grace mm -hmm. is credible. If grace tells you that, just take it, take it as it is. Mm -hmm. Because we have watched you over the time. Yes. You know? Yes. Uh, if, if she does that, you know, if somebody comes up with a story, oh, Grace has done this and this. No, not Grace. Mm. Uh, we know Grace. Yes. We know Grace. She can't do that. Mm. Because we have watched you over, over time. time. So we we can tell your testimony. Mm. You know, we can tell your story. Yes. <laughs> That's yes. not an easy place to mm. be. Mm. Because this life is made up of ups and downs. And uh, every once in a while, you, you take a wrong turn. You, yes. you say the wrong thing. You do the right wrong thing. And those things uh, withdraw from your credibility account. Yes. You know, credibility yes. is like a bank account. Mm, it's similar to trust. Yes. Mm. So when, 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 when you do the right things, you deposit. Uh, you deposit. When you do the wrong thing, withdraw. you withdraw. In plenty. In <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time. Usually you do small things and you withdraw a lot. Yeah. You know? 
<laughs> but you do a great thing, but we deposit kidogo. Sana. <laughs> in, in a your, pinch. Very, it's very kidogo. Okay. So that's that's uh, what I would say, that uh, trust, yes, is, is, is one of the great things, uh, virtues of leadership. But it's one of them, uh, the aspects of, of credibility, which mm. is a great thing for leadership. Okay. Yes. So. Yeah. So we talked about empowering. Let me not do the same thing I've done with <laughs> trust. Yes. But uh, we talked about a servant leader empowers others in the sense that they enable, they empower, they encourage the team members. You, you, uh, they are not afraid to allow others to shine. You know, yes. uh, when, when I see uh, a gift, a talent, a skill, uh, in you, I, I want to help you to develop it, uh, yeah. to um, let it come up, let it grow uh, in you so that it can be of benefit to all of us and also to yourself. So that that is empowering, which is a great thing in uh, servant leadership. The other one we talked about was building community, uh, building teamwork. Uh, they create a sense of togetherness, working together. So when I have a team, uh, we want to see how can we all pull together in the same uh, direction. Yeah. So you, you, you develop relationships among team members that are mutually beneficial to, to each other. Mm -hmm. So you don't create an environment where your team members fight one another or, or undermine uh, one another. Yeah. But you create an environment where team members support one another. Uh, team members uh, encourage one another. They they celebrate one another. Yes. Uh, your success is our success. You know, so we we are not competing. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but when there's la that lacking, then you find that team members are competing, fighting, you know, undermining. Especially if a, if a leader uh, plays favorites, you know, mm. so that you, you see this person is more aligned towards you. And so you, you are constantly giving them the opportunities and causing them to shine at the expense of other people. Uh, what I call the Jacob family syndrome you know yeah coat of many colors yes. Th that yes. that is not that is not good at all mm. so you you want to bring empower everybody in their own area of strength yes uh, and that requires that you understand the individual i think i mentioned here maybe i didn't that servant leadership is a relative of Transformational leadership. Yes, yes I did that. Last that. Time. Yes, I said it last time. And they say the difference is so thin. Is is they are almost the two, the two sides of the same coin. Yes. Yeah, because one of the one of the components of transformational leadership is what we called individualized consideration. Yes. Where the leader pays attention to every person and knows every individual what their strengths are, what their weaknesses are, and help them to operate within their areas of strength. Yes. So as a leader, I will not put you in a place where I know you're going to fail, mm. uh, which is an area of your weakness, because my, my uh, aim and objective is not to see you fail. True. Is to see you succeed. succeed. So you may even be wanting, oh, I want to be in this department or I want to do this or, you know, because it is glamorous or whatever. But I will nicely, you know, uh, discourage you from that because I know you. Yes. And I know that if I give you this, you are going to embarrass yourself. And when you embarrass yourself, you lose motivation, you lose confidence, and therefore you don't grow. Mm -hmm. But I will instead put you in another place where you shine. And because we are all together, uh, everybody celebrates you yes. in that area. But we celebrate another person in another oh, yeah. area. That's what good servant leadership and good transformational leadership is all about. Mm -hmm. Knowing your people, putting them in the right places so that they thrive, they shine, 
I hope that's what you have done yes. in this new transformation <laughs> of uh, hope. <laughs> you know, as you're talking, I was Googling. Uh, yeah, you are Googling. Tick, 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 tick. <laughs> tick, 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 tick. Yes. By God's grace. By God's grace. <laughs> yes. So we wait to see. So empowering mm. is and building community, making people to work together as a team. Okay. I'll ask to pause here for a quick break. And then when we come back, we'll proceed from there. You are on the Leadership Forum on Praise Junction. My name is Grace Mtis. I'm hosting Reverend Dr. David Oginde, helping us discuss this topic of servant leadership, some of the characteristics of a servant leader. And we are looking forward to engaging with you on 20933 0717 Let's catch up with the news at noon. We'll be right back. <laughs> 